Hi, and welcome to another video about Lambda triggers. Today, we will learn how to trigger a Lambda function whenever a file gets uploaded to an S3 bucket. We also want to process the file and store the content in a DynamoDB table. So why do we even want to do this? Well, let's say you have a website where people can register new birds. To do this, you want users to be able to upload a file containing a list of birds. And then that file should be processed and the birds stored in a database. So this is where Lambda triggers come in handy again. We want to trigger a Lambda function each time a file is uploaded to our S3 bucket. To create this application, we need the following resources. An S3 bucket, a DynamoDB table, a Lambda function that can process events from an S3 bucket, and an IAM role with S3 and DynamoDB access. I will make use of the AWS console to create and configure all these resources. First, we need a DynamoDB table. I'll just reuse the table called Awesome Birds, which we created in one of the previous videos. So, if you don't have a DynamoDB table already, go ahead and watch that video. Now we can create an S3 bucket. Navigate to S3, hit Create Bucket, give the bucket a name. An S3 bucket name has to be globally unique. For all the other stuff, choose Default Settings and scroll down and hit Create Bucket. Now that we have created our S3 bucket, we can go over to Lambda and create a new function. I'll choose Python, of course, as our programming language. Give the function a name. I'll call mine birds s3 trigger and choose default settings for everything else. Let's go over to IAM and give the Lambda function role access to our S3 bucket and the DynamoDB table. For the purpose of this demo, I'll just give the role access to everything regarding S3 and DynamoDB. So let's attach the DynamoDB full access policy and the Amazon S3 full access policy. Now we can add the Lambda trigger for whenever a new file is uploaded to our S3 bucket. So go back to the Lambda function and add the trigger, choose S3 and then our bucket. And by default, the correct event type is selected. Before we can hit add to create our Lambda trigger, we have to check the recursive invocation warning box. This warning does not apply to us since we are going to store the result in a DynamoDB table, but I'll recommend reading the warning anyway. Okay, so now we have to process the event from our S3 bucket. As I said in the previous video, the event object is accessible through the event parameter in the Lambda handler method. Inside the event object, we can find the file name of the file that just got uploaded. We want to use that file name to access the file and its content in our S3 bucket. To do that, we need to extract the file name from the event. The file name is accessible through event, records, and the first element, S3, object, and key. Now that we can access the file name, we need to write the code to read our file. For this, I will make use of the Bodo3 SDK. Just import Bodo3, then initiate a new Bodo3 S3 resource, and write file equals S3 dot object, and then provide the bucket name as a parameter. We can find the bucket name over here at S3. And then we also need to provide a second parameter, which is our file name. And lastly, we have to write dot get to access the file. The file should contain a JSON list of birds. 
So I'll use the JSON library, which is imported at the top of our code file, to extract the content as a Python dictionary. Just write file underscore content equals json dot load and then provide the file variable as our parameter and then extract the body field inside our file variable. Now that we have our Python dictionary, we can iterate over it and write each bird to the DynamoDB table. For this, we need to initiate a Bodo3 DynamoDB resource and a table object to enable us to write to our DynamoDB table. Now we can create a for loop and for each element inside our for loop, we can write table.put item and provide the bird as our parameter. It's now time to test our bird storage application. For this, we need a JSON file. It just so happens that I have such a file on my computer. It looks like this. We have a JSON list with the JSON objects for each bird. So, I'll just go over to S3, find my bucket, and inside that one I will hit the upload button and select the file on my computer. And then I will hit upload. The lambda function should now run and the birds should be visible in the DynamoDB table. So, let's go over to DynamoDB and see if the birds appear. Fantastic! The application did as we intended. And if we take a look at one of the bird objects, we can see that it contains all our attributes. Now, we have learned how to use S3 buckets as triggers for a lambda function, and how to process files in an S3 bucket. In the next video, I will show you how to make a very simple API using the Amazon API Gateway and a Lambda function as our backend. I hope you liked this video. If so, please give this video a like. And to learn more about Lambda functions, remember to subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon to get notified when I publish more content.